Hey everybody, Coach Carroll here. What you're staring at is a picture of Moro Marcos and former world number one Jennifer Capriotti in the early 1990s, one of her little brother's junior tennis tournaments. And what's so neat about this picture is that it represents the culmination of the coming to America phase in Moro's life when he left Brazil in his mid-twenties and came to the U.S. to sort of ply his trade as a tennis instructor. And he started out at Rick Macy's Tennis Academy in Florida. He was one of their living uh, tennis instructors and had a lot of duties and among them was picking up an 11 year old Jennifer Capriotti and the rest of the kids at the academy and you know dropping them off at school and picking them up from school and getting them back to the courts and all the stuff a young pro does uh, when they're first starting out and uh, going through these duties led more to get to know these kids off the court you know as people and this eventually helped him understand what makes people tick on the tennis court and he's got a real great way of relating to people and this is where Moro, you know, besides the fact that he's, his technical knowledge of the game is superb and unsurpassed, I believe, um, that he really stands out as an instructor uh, that, in that area. Uh, and Moro would never say this kind of stuff about himself because he's such a humble guy. Um, but I've made it my mission in life to get this guy known by the world because uh, his instruction is so great. And I have no problem saying it because I believe it's 100% true. Um, Twelve years ago, I worked with him at the Myrtle Beach Tennis Club in South Carolina. And I studied this dude like a hawk. Um, we became really good friends, and he became like a mentor to me. And his students would always rave about how much they loved him as an instructor and as a person. And everyone was always laughing when they come off the court with him. They were always getting better. It was just amazing to me. And this was not only in Myrtle Beach. Um, you know, you have some letters here. There's one from Arrowhead uh, in New Jersey. Uh, there's another one from uh, Central Park, uh, Riverside Country Club in Florida, um, you know, Scott Bally, uh, he worked at Southampton Bath and Tennis Club, and there's one from uh, Carlos Scoffey's Tournament Tough Tennis Academy in Florida, where he was the uh, head of the elite summer junior tournament program uh, for two summers. And there's Moro when he was five years old. That's him with his dad uh, back in, uh, I believe that's in Piracicaba, Brazil, um, not far from Sao Paulo. And that's where that was taken. He's a little five-year-old guy there learning the game, and he turned into a pretty good tennis player on his uh, in his own right. He was a top-ranked junior in Brazil, and he did a little stint in the Navy uh, after graduating college where he finished third his class with a degree in physical education. Um, and he's always been a go-getter. And we're going to show you some clips now of Moro teaching some lessons, and so you're going to see some of his students, some interviews, and some before and afters. So let's get to it. I am here with Paul. And what's your last name, Paul? Kreibinger. Paul Kreibinger. Okay. And Paul's family is from Holland. Yeah. Correct? Okay. And we're in Sausalito, and we're filming some, um, he's going to have a lesson with Moro today. You just started playing tennis how long ago? Uh, well, about three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Okay, this is three weeks ago. You, have you ever played tennis before? I just whacked around my brother, but I never had a lesson. I okay. Really, you know, right. never knew how to hit a ball properly. And I was talking with, it's I May, your mom. Yeah. And she, because she's been taking lessons more, she actually got you started. Right, so I may talk to my brother, my brother talked to me, and we're sort of kind of... Okay, so it spreads. Spread, it's spreading through the family. Okay, yeah, and you guys you know, you say you have a sport now that everybody can kind of do together right, in the summer right, and right. something to do. Okay, cool. And also, um, she, I may told us this, and he doesn't know that we know this, but I may, I may told us that he was saying, man, how come you didn't give me introduced to tennis when I was younger? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting pretty good pretty quick. Yeah, right? yeah, I like it. It's Three good. weeks, man. It's good. Uh, so anyway, we've got a, another Richard Krejcik right here, right? No, well, no, I hope I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I just want to be able to whack it well and whack it well and, and have fun and have fun and, and play the it. game the way it's supposed to be played. You know, that's what so, we all want. Right? That's what we want. Okay, so what, what's going to happen here in just a second is I'm going to unclip Paul here, and then he's going to go through because Morrow's just finishing up with his mom a couple last tips, right. and uh, we're going to watch his lesson and uh, see. What we Okay, everybody, so uh, we've got Paul here, and he's spraying balls everywhere but inside the court. They're into the net. They're going out. They're going everywhere. Morrow is give him a, he gives him a little Plan tip. Your right, little right there. You see that? Okay, he gives him a little yeah. tip. Plan your timing. His yeah. contact zone. And he taught him how to do that. And all of a sudden, yeah, they'll start going in. Nice. Sweet. Just one quick fix. This was five minutes later. Now, from when you started playing back again six months ago or whatever, and then you started getting a little bit better, and you're like, oh, I'm trying to, you know, figure this stuff out, because we're all trying to figure things out, right? Um, and then you come up on more. What was the difference in your improvement between the first three months and of that six and then the second three months after you met more? I can't even remember what I was doing before I met more. Okay. Um, it was all just self-taught, just playing, right. and... Uh, Man, the first five minutes, Morrow corrected one thing. I was like, "One 
thing. The what? Same. And I still use it to this day. Right. And I just wanted to know how much more I didn't know. How, you guys have both been playing, taking lessons with more for how long? Since the, I think, uh, beginning months, of August. Right? Three months? Mm -hmm. And yeah. you've been playing tennis for a year? Yeah. Right. Okay. How much would you say in the first, say, nine months or so, that you started playing tennis compared to the last two months or whatever, ten months, you know, since you've been working with Moral, what's the difference? How how much have you improved recently as compared to when you first started playing? Drastically, I think, uh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, so another level. Right. So your improvement's actually accelerated. No, definitely. Okay. All right, good. And quickly. Good. And it was immediate. Hey, everybody. Coach Carroll's here. Coach Moral. Right. You guys have seen him in some videos, and you can probably hear my voice. I gotta talk a little louder because he's the one with the mic on right now. But Moro uh, is gonna—he's gonna show us uh, some things on the forehand, and he's got a really cool four-step kind of method and four-step process that he uses with his students. That's really gonna help you do a couple things. You're gonna get a better feel for your shot. So sometimes, if you're hitting a forehand and you're doing this, you're like, "Yeah, it's nice," but I want to know how the pros feel. How does it feel when Djokovic or Juan Del Potro? Boom! It's a big forehand. Okay, we're going to get you to do that. You're going to understand the process first, and then you're going to understand a little bit about some drills and stuff you can do so you can do it at home, so that you can go, wow, okay, I've got, you know, this forehand freaking awesome. Okay? So without further ado, Moro is going to go over a few things here, uh, kind of a description, if you will, of the four phases of how he teaches a great killer forehand, how his students hit wicked forehands, and uh, we'll dive right into it. I think that if you understand right from the beginning how the whole thing works, and then you start working on it, and as you're working on it, there are the phases of the stroke in which you have to keep aware of if you're doing it right or wrong, you're going to see that out of, I suppose that when I hit a, a stroke correctly, i got to think of four, five, six things that i got to be doing right. On the beginning, when you try to do it, you're not going to do all four, five, six things right. But I believe you, trust me, you're not going to do all six things wrong. You get these four or five information in your mind, and you're thinking about what you got to do, and you're going to do one or two of them right, and the others are not going to fall in place. And then you're going to think of it again, and then other something else, some other component of the stroke comes out right this time. But then the other one that you weren't thinking of is come out right. So until you muscle memorize all the components, and they come together as a one unit, you just got to enjoy the ride of the, the footage of wiring the brain to do that. And so the post-stroke method, prepare a lot faster then you can uh, deal with a ball coming hard at you not be late see that you get a little more penetration on your shot that it's gonna go dipping down into the court after it clears the net because it's a sinker it's almost like insurance yes good Give it a little. That's pretty. There you go. Guiding, getting out of the way. Guiding, getting out of the way. I mean. Wow. Pretty. Ah. Nice. Oh, you got me there. Sweet. Nice. Plan your tiny. Very nice. Go all the way back so I can feed you deeper. That's good news. You didn't forget anything on that side after we did that work. It's right where we want it still. Oh, man.
I'm gonna break that down.